Good morning. Let's start this morning with prayer. Father, we dedicate this Wednesday, the final Wednesday to you, Lord. We give you glory and thanks in Jesus' name. Oh, uh, no, not final. Uh, May 24th. We have 31st Wednesday, which will be my day of reflection. Well, this is chapter 41. We're going to read from uh, 17 and on. This will be a lot of reading today. This is just a story. I read off of the Amplified Bible because it's more understandable. So Pharaoh said to Joseph, In my dream, I was standing on the bank of the Nile, and seven fat, sleek, and handsome cows came up from the river, and they grazed in the reed grass of marsh pasture. Lo, seven other cows came up after them, very ugly and gaunt, just skin and bones, such emas emaciated animals as I have never seen in all the land of Egypt. And the lean and ugly cows ate up the first seven fat cows, yet when they had devoured them, it could not be detected that they had eaten them because they were still and thin and emaciated as before. Then I woke up, but again I fell asleep and dreamed. I saw in my second dream seven ears of grain, plump and good, growing on a single stalk. And lo, seven other ears, withered, thin, and scorched by the east wind, sprouted after them. And the thin ears devoured the seven good ears. Now I told this to the magicians and soothsayers, but there was no one who could explain it to me. It's the same old, same old that we heard before. So guess what John Calvin writes? The whole narration does not need to be explained, for Pharaoh only repeats what we have before considered. So he's saying that it's not worthy to be reiterated, but then he continues to say, whereby God designed to testify that the earth would be so great that the people, instead of being nourished by the abundance of food gathered together, would be famished and dragged of miserable existence. Joseph, in answering that the two dreams were one, simply means that one and the same thing was showed unto Pharaoh by two figures. But before he introduces his interpretation, he maintains that this not only merely vanishing dream, <clears throat> but divine oracle. For Unless the vision had proceeded from God, it would have been foolish to inquire anxiously what it portended. Portended. Huh. I never heard the word portended. Intended. Huh. Verse 25. As Calvin said, Joseph said unto Pharaoh, The dream of Pharaoh is one. God had shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. Wow. In contemporary English, Joseph replied, Your majesty, both your dreams mean the same thing. And in them, God has shown that what he's going to do in the future. So Calvin writes, before Joseph introduced his interpretation, he maintains that this not merely vanishing dream, but divine oracle. For unless the dream had proceeded from God, it would have been foolish to inquire anxiously, Oh, portent, that's something I already read. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, get that out. So, you, you could tell that I'm actually editing uh, my first. So, what I do is I print, I teach, and then I edit, and then finally print. You know, the Song of Solomon, the box of it just came. I think I did about three-fourth upload because I found more mistakes. Up, 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 up. But... Whoever orders from today on, they're going to get flawless, uh, only few correction needed kind of version. So G Genesis, same thing. So Calvin writes, Pharaoh, therefore, does not here labor in vain in inquiring into the counsel of God. The form of speaking, however, requires notice because Joseph does not barely say that God will declare beforehand what may happen from some other quarter but what he himself about to do. He hence inferred that God does not indolently 
contemplate the fortuitous issue of things as most philosophers vainly talk, but that the determined at the own will shall happen. So Joseph is telling the, the Pharaoh, Pharaoh, the dream that you have is a spiritual dream, number one, and it is not going to talk about nonsense, theoretical stuff that really does not happen. The dream that you had, it's going to happen in reality at real time very soon. So he's putting it existentially. He's dreaming to the reality of their time. I think it's very critical. And then he the interpretation begins. He said, two or one, sir. But this is the reality that's going to happen now. Good job, Pharaoh. You did well. You did well by contacting me, by getting me out of the prison, because it's not just a um, result of eating too much pizza the night before. He, he interprets. The seven good cows are seven years, and seven good years of, are seven years. The dreams are one. The seven lean and ugly cows that came up after them are seven years. And the seven empty years lightened by the east wind also are seven years of famine. It is as I told Pharaoh, God has shown to Pharaoh what he's about to do. There will come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt. But after them, there will arise seven years of famine. And all the plenty will be forgotten in the land of Egypt. The famine will consume the land. And the plenty will unknown in the land by reason of the famine that will follow, for it will be very severe. And the doubling of Pharaoh's dream means that the things is fixed by God and will shortly bring it about. Wow. This is, if you're a filmmaker, this is the beautiful drama. And you need to zoom in uh, Joseph's face. And zoom out and zoom into Pharaoh's face and, you know, the whole dynamic that's happening. And this young man, 30 years old, Hebrew boy, uh, just freshly shaven, skinny because he was not really fed well in the prison. And yet he speaks with such authority. He's not like, I think he doesn't use those kind of questionable. I think seven years could be well i'm not so sure but maybe seven years no he said two dreams are one sir and it's going to happen quickly because you had a same dream twice it's going to happen in reality in and seven years of plenty great harvest will come and seven years of famine will follow just almost interpreting the dream, but almost prophetically claiming with authority. So Calvin writes, Joseph not only commemorates the stability of heavenly decree, but also declares what God has determined to do is near at hand, lest Pharaoh himself should slumber in the confident expectation of longer delay. For though we confess that the judgment of God are always hanging over our heads, yet unless we are stimulated by the thought of their speedy reproach, approach, we are but slightly affected by anxiety and fear respecting them. Yeah, so that's it. So Pharaoh now is in hand. And Pharaoh has to make a decision. Now, daily gospel question is, do you have a gift of interpreting dreams? Have you met anyone with such gift? How do you deal with uh, when someone interpret your dream? Well, you approach it carefully. You prayerfully consider. And then either take or not take. You don't have to take every interpretation that comes to you. It takes your faith. Okay? It takes faith to interpret. It takes your faith to either accept or reject. Just know that. So don't be gaslighted by some people who use spiritual gift to gaslight you and take whatever they need from you. Okay, be careful. But at the same time, there is there is godly person that could interpret and really speak life into you, right? Uh, and these are the people who really believe that they are just a vessel of the Lord. 
and they are going to be used by God in that way. Amen. So, Father, I just pray today as you give dream to somebody and you give gift of interpretation to somebody, they will all work together for good. I will use it and then and it will build up the kingdom because you could tell the future. You would show us prophetically what is about to take place, Lord God. And we would use it for your glory. Yes, Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We give you. Jesus, and then we pray. Amen. Lord bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.